Okay, this lesson is on solving quadratics using the quadratic formula. Along with solving by square roots, the quadratic formula is probably the most versatile way of solving a quadratic. And you're going to find yourself as we move through the semester probably using quadratic formula more and more because it is the most reliable. Quadratic formula will allow you to solve any quadratic equation. So no matter if uh, you, know, you have complex or imaginary numbers or they're decimals or square roots, the quadratic formula does it all. Okay? It solves all types of quadratic equations. So it, see, it, you know, it usually is um, one that students use the most. So a couple things we're going to talk about here. We're going to talk about the term discriminant. Um, if you're if you're doing this for the second time, then you that that word should seem familiar. Discriminant, a okay, is what is under the radical. So the quadratic formula, and, and I'll just write it. Um, it's down below, but the quadratic formula is x equals opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four ac all over 2a. The discriminant is the value of what is underneath the radical. It's just the b squared minus 4ac. Well, why is that important? Well, the value that you get under that radical is going to tell you how many solutions you're going to have and what type they are. So down below, I have described what you could possibly get for discriminants. So if you were to do b squared minus 4ac, and, and by the way, the a, the b, and the c are all the same a, b, and c in, uh, in quadratics. a is the number that's in front of the x squared right here. b is always the number in front of the x, and c is always the number by itself. Assuming that everything's in the right order, um, that's how it works out. So there's, there's three uh, situations you can have. You can have a situation where whatever you get inside the radical is positive, you know, greater than zero. So whatever you get from b squared minus 4ac is positive. If you get a positive number, you know that you're going to get two real solutions, or two solutions. If you get what's inside the radical actually equal to zero. So this is greater than zero, and this is zero. So if you did b squared minus 4ac 4 4 and you got actually zero, that means that there is only one solution. So a positive number, two solutions. Zero, one solution. And if in some case you get a number that's less than zero, meaning negative, so less than zero, negative number, your solutions will be imaginary. And all that means is that, <clears throat> remember, solutions are where it crosses the x-axis. So in a positive discriminant, that means you're going to have it cross the x-axis twice. When you get zero, it means it just crosses it once. And if you get it that's negative, you get imaginary solutions, which just means that there are no x-intercepts. It does not cross the x-axis. It doesn't mean that the parabola is imaginary or made up or whatever. It just means that it does not cross the x-axis. So let's look and use the discriminant <clears throat> to help us find solutions using the quadratic formula. Okay. So we're going to do a couple examples here. So this particular uh, quadratic uh, function is factorable, and you certainly could factor it and solve it. But we're going to show you that you can use the quadratic formula for any type of equation. Okay. So the quadratic formula, again, and I'll, I'll write it out here, is x equals opposite of b plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2 times a. And you basically just place in all the values. Like here's my a, here's my b, and here's my c. 
<clears throat> now, there's no number in front of the A, so we, uh, we assume that that's 1. So opposite of B. So this part right here, opposite of B, so if, if the, the B is negative 7 like this, then it'll be positive 7 plus or minus the square root of B squared, so negative 7 squared, negative 7 times negative 7 is 49, minus 4 times A times C, all over 2 times my A, or 2 times 1, which is 2. When doing the quadratic formula, it is important that you do the discriminant first. You do what is inside the radical first. And you can do that with any scientific or graphing calculator. You could just type it in literally as it is, like literally 49 minus 4 times 1 times negative 18. And it will spit out the correct answer, which in this case is 121. So what that means is I have, oop, wrong thing. So that means is I have 7 plus or minus the square root of 121 over 2. Now sometimes you won't be able to simplify the radical. But other times, like this, you can. The square root of 121 is a perfect square. It's 11. So it's 7 plus or minus 11 over 2. And this is always going to produce two answers. It's going to go 7 plus 11 divided by 2 and 7 minus 11 divided by 2. Well, 7 plus 11 is 18. Divided by 2 is 9. 7 minus 11 is negative 4. Divided by 2 is negative 2. So my solutions are 9 and negative 2. That's quadratic formula. Let's try another one. Uh, we'll skip over the, the middle one there, just to save room. But sometimes your equations might be out of order. Uh, you know, you might have things on opposite sides of the equal sign. It's important to understand that doing quadratic equations, doing quadratic equations, they all have to be on the same side of the equal sign. So, it doesn't matter if you move everything to the right or everything to the left. It might seem that it's easier to just, you know, move this over here. You do have to remember to put things in the right order. So what I have is negative 4z squared plus 7z and then minus 3 because it, it turns positive uh, when it comes over across the equal sign. So now I have a quadratic, and I can put equal zero or whatever, uh, and now I can identify my a, b, and c, and put that in the quadratic formula. So uh, again, I'll do this different color here, uh, x equals opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared, 7 squared is 49, minus 4 times a, which is negative 4, times c, which is negative 3. So, <clears throat> if you put that in your calculator um, and, and write it out, oh, I forgot the bottom part, over 2 times a, which is negative 8. 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. So again, we want to do the discriminant first. We want to do what's inside the radical first. You could do that just straight up, uh, you know, in your calculator. If you do that properly, 49 minus 4 times negative 4 times negative 3 is 1 over uh, negative 8. Again, here's a situation where the radical is something that is simplified. You, you know the square root of 1. It's, it's, it's 1. So you have negative 7, that's negative 7, plus or minus 1 over negative 8. And again, that'll produce two answers, negative 7 plus 1 over negative 8 and negative 7 minus 1 over negative 8. Well, negative 7 plus 1 is negative 6, and negative 6 over negative 8 reduces to 3 fourths. It's important that you put fraction forms. Do not change it to a decimal. Whenever possible, do not change it to a decimal. That is not the exact form of the answer. 
Okay, leave it in fraction form, reduced fraction form. Negative 7 minus 1 is negative 8. Negative 8 divided by negative 8 is 1. So those are my two answers. Okay, that's quadratic formula. We're going to do one more example here. And uh, then, you know, you can try number two if you want, and I'll post the answer, and you can try number five. I want to show you one situation where <coughs> the radical might not work out the way that you want it to. For example, x equals opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared, negative 6 squared is 36, minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. When you do your discriminant, put that in the calculator, 36 minus 4 times 1 times 10. So here's the problem. You get 6 plus or minus the square root of negative 4. So there's the issue. You can't take the square root of a negative number. So we have a problem. And that's where imaginary solutions come in. And this is something that maybe you've seen or not seen, but you can't take the square root of a negative 4. And the way that you know, mathematicians a long time ago figured a way to do this, because we need to find solutions, you know, just because it has no x-intercept doesn't mean that it doesn't have any solutions. So we're going to get imaginary solutions. And the fix for that is simply just placing an i out front and changing that to a positive. Now we can take the square root. The square root of 4 is 2. So essentially, well, and we have this over 2. So essentially we have 6 plus or minus i times 2, or 2i, over 2. Then, since all of these are divisible by 2, I can just divide everything by 2 and get a final answer of 3 plus or minus 1i, or just i, over 1. That's it. You certainly can break it down and to put 3 plus i over 1, or 3 minus i over 1. In fact, you don't even need the 1 on the bottom of the fraction. That can simply be your answer. And so that's working with imaginary solutions. Go ahead, pause the video, and try to do number two and number five on your own. Play the video when you're ready to see the answers. Okay, a couple things I want to show you. You know, um, these didn't end up working at, like perfect uh, squares like everything else did, so I wanted to just show you that real quick. So in number two, you'll see if I, if I move everything over properly, and it doesn't matter if you moved everything to the left or the right, you, sh you should have still ended up with the same answer I did. You end up with 12 and as your discriminant and 12 under the radical, so you have 4 plus or minus the square root of 12 over 2. This is where our last lesson in simplifying radicals comes in, because you do have to simplify this radical. Now, if you break it out, I like to just do it sort of sideways here. 12 goes into 4 and 3, and 4 goes into 2 and 2, so I end up with 2 radical 3 as my simplified version. So, what this means is my answer, my final answer, is 4 plus or minus 2 radical 3 over 2, and you are perfectly fine leaving it like that. If you'd like to go a step further, you could have noticed that the 2's and the 4 are all divisible by 2. So you could have, this is not necessary, you could have taken it a step further, divided everything by 2 and got 2 plus or minus radical 3. The other thing happened in this problem in number 5 where it's not a perfect square but then it's also negative. So again, the fix doesn't change. The fix is still place an i out front. That changes to a positive. But now 8 is, uh, you can simplify 8. So what we're going to do is sort of break this off. 8 goes to 4 and 2, and 4 goes into 2 and 2. So I have a pair there. So I have 2 radical 2.
With the I out front, though, the I just goes with the 2. So I end up with a final answer of negative 4 plus or minus 2I, radical 2, over 2. And just like the previous problem, I could divide all those numbers by 2, giving me negative 2 plus or minus I, radical 2. Oh, don't even need the over 1. That would be your final answer. So, um, if you have any questions about this, I know this is a very difficult concept. This is an outcome that really gave some problems for all students uh, throughout the year. Dealing with imaginary solutions, simplifying radicals and all that stuff is a challenge. So, the last thing here is just to find, use the discriminant to define how many solutions you're going to have and of what type you're going to have. So this is real easy. To use the discriminant, all you're going to do is do what's inside the radical, which is b squared minus 4ac. So all I do is do 34 squared minus 4 times a times c. And you just see what you get. So I could do 34, right in my calculator, 34 squared minus 4 times 1 times 289, and I get a discriminant of 0. What that means, what that tells me, is I'm going to have one real solution. Remember, if it's positive, you have two real solutions. If it's 0, you have one real solution. And if it's negative, you have imaginary solutions. So let's try this one. Important, everything has to be on the same side. So I'm going to move both of these over here. So I have x squared plus 8x and minus 3. Use the discriminant b squared minus 4 times a times c. So 64 minus 4 times 1 times negative 3. 76 is my discriminant. Since that is positive, that means I have two real solutions. There we go. Now we can probably use process of elimination here on what we're going to get on this last one, but we'll do it anyways. This goes over here. needs to be on the same side. So I have 4q squared minus 3q plus 1 equals 0. So I do my discriminant, which is b squared minus 4 times a, or times a, yeah, times c. <laughs> And if you do that properly, 9 minus 4 times 4 times 1, you get negative 7. The fact that you get a negative number tells me that my solutions are imaginary. And that's it. Go ahead and uh, try big ideas there uh, and go through the practice. If you have any questions, let me know.